Hello and welcome to our weekly Parsha Share with the commentary of the al Kodesh. This week is a little bit different, as you probably noticed, if you're looking at this in Torah anytime or on my Facebook page or on my YouTube channel, because really this year is in two parts. If I'm completely honest with you, uh, the first part I took from a, a, a video I made, oh, I think in uh, two years ago. I think it was two years ago. It's only 10 minutes, but it's got some of the most brilliant al insights. It's at the beginning of the Parsha, the first two psukim. Um, and really, it deserves a share in its own right. And so I've given that there, and I've included it here. Uh, so if you've only got a little time, then by all means, look at that. It follows very nicely, perfectly through um, into Posa Gimel in this week's uh, Parsha. Um, and so we'll see, as I develop, as I explain this to you, exactly why it's in two parts. That's the first thing. Of course, as usual, our share is dedicated uh, for the refuel of uh, some people. Uh, and a lot of people have been contacting me, incidentally, a lot. I don't know why so many. Oh, perhaps because my translation of Shara Betochen, Rufu Asalev, is now selling, <clears throat> wait for this, um, by some crazy... Um, algorithm and Amazon that's gone wild. You can get one of my books for $23,370 or something. Um, because somehow or other people look for books that are out of print or nearly out of print and uh, they try to buy them up. I think that's how it works. Anyway, to cut a long story short, I'm reprinting uh, my Rufus Salev uh, with in this edition that he was going to have Nicodot, it's going to have vowels. So hopefully you'll be able to buy it from me very shortly for $25, which is the price, um, not the 200, 400, 600, 800, over a thousand, and now this insane price that people are trying to, um, or bots are trying to get you to pay. So please keep your eye uh, peeled for that. I'll give you announcements as, they, as we proceed and progress. Anyway, back to this. So, uh, we dedicate this share uh, so often to um, uh, some people we've been dabbling for for quite a long time, and one only recently. Uh, the recent one I should really mention first is my wife, who's had her second knee replacement. It's very painful indeed. So, Ita Rivka Basima Esther, my dear wife, should have a Rufua Shalima and be pain free very soon. Um, then we mentioned, as you know, uh, a little boy, a uh, little baby boy, we've been davening for for many a month, who is waiting for a lung transplant. Um, and he is, uh, uh, his grandparents are very, very close to me uh, at the moment, and dad uh, uh, too. Uh, and uh, the, the little boy sadly just got COVID, which means they, he's off the transplant list for three weeks. So there's a lot of daffing for us to do there. First of all, that there is a transplant available for this gorgeous little boy. And uh, second of all, that um, he gets over this COVID uh, quickly and speedily. Um, and his name is, as you will uh, undoubtedly know, Arechaim Ben Chana Yehudis. And he should have all the things we've mentioned. Unfortunately, my transplant recovery from COVID speedily and easily and that the family should have no more worries. And the last one is one of my very dearest friends, uh, somebody I'm very fond of and uh, we daven for him every week and have been for a long time, uh, Ravol Chai Ben Sora, who is Baruch Hashem, doing a lot better and it's all I'm quite sure due to your prayers and the prayers for everybody else and of course our learning together we all play a part um, in him to continue uh, to do as well as he's been in the last few weeks. And uh, so I think that takes care of everything we've said. Back to the al -Shikh. The first part of the al if you look at that 10 minutes here, is utterly brilliant. A new book, Devorim, Moshe Rabbeinu's final address to the Jewish people. A telling or retelling, a telling, teaching or reteaching of the Torah he's already given us, hence the name. Jitron, I mean the Greek, uh, sorry, the, yeah, the Greek, of course, for a second telling. Um, and that's what's going on. Moshe, in the first two psukim, brilliantly observed by the al in part one, points out exactly how it is the case that Moshe makes sure before he gives the pupil the lesson that he requires, the, the necessary uh, uh, groundwork, uh, foundations have been laid. He has to explore it and make sure they're willing to accept the criticism he's about to give. Through the criticism, they'll be able to overcome the problems and move on. That's the first two And then we come to 
Post and Gimel. So that's where we're going to start. And the al is going to, we're going to share the words of the Sarsemis once again with the al this week. And you will see that the al um, a of course, being a Sephardi, being a Kabbalist, will hint at the Kabbalistic uh, approach to our analysis of really as one posik, um, echoing or echoing the wrong word because he came first, but uh, mirroring uh, the, the approach of the Sas Emmas. And then we're going to take a much more pragmatic, uh, almost mundane, although it's not mundane, but an everyday approach to the message contained. And that will see us into another brilliant uh, insight from the Alshach. So let's, with all that as an introduction, let's actually start. So, Posak Aleph and Beish, please look at the part one. Ela Devorin Shadim and Moshe called in Israel. These are the words that Moshe spoke to the whole Jewish people. They were Yarden over the Jordan River, but Mipar in the desert, but Robin, the plain, Mal Suf, opposite a place called Suf, Bain Poran, Bain Tofel, between a place called Poran and Tofel, Malovan, the Katseris, the Dizohov, and other two geographical locations. We've discussed this, the Alshik discusses this in the first year. Achra also, Ezra Echad also, the Yoim. 11 days, Mechorev, from a place called Chorev, at Derech Har Seir, on the way to Mount Seir, at Kodesh Barnea, to a place called Kodesh Barnea. And then we come to the second part of the Elshech. So, Vahi Ba'arboim Shon, it was in the 40th year, Ba'ashti Osa L'Chodesh, it was in the Ashti Osa L'Chodesh, the 11th of the of the month, Ba'echad L'Chodesh, in the first of the month, Diber Moshe, sorry, Ba'ashti Osa L'Chodesh, in the 11th month, sorry, Ba'echad L'Chodesh, in the first of the month, Deber Moshe, Ben Israel, Moshe speaks to the whole of the Jewish people. A call, kick call, like all, Shatziva Hashem Oisa Olehem, which Hashem had said, Achri Hakaisa is Sichon Abdikot, Sichon Melch, Mara the king of them, Emirates, Asher Yashab Becheshman, who lived in a place called Cheshman, Ves Og, Melch Aboshan, and Og, the giant Melch Aboshan, Asher Yashab Ashtoris, and he lived in a place called Ashtoris, Ben Ederi. Every year, over the Jordan, Be'er, Be'er, as Moab, the land of Moab, Hoyle, Moshe, Be'er, as a Torah, as Ice, Moshe begins to, to elaborate on this Torah. Lemor to say, Hashem, Elokeinu, Deber, Elena, Bechorev, Lemor, Hashem spoke to you on Chorev, on Mount Sinai, Rab, Lechem, Shevaz, Bahar, Hazem, to say to you, and let's see how the the art scroll translates that. I should have told you, I've got my little art scroll as usual, and we're looking at page 940, and I'm intrigued to see how they translate that one. Hashem spoke to us in Chorib saying, enough of your dwelling in this mountain. Okay, it's time to move on. Um, so he said to them, Pros. And off you go to Harpros. Go and take possession of this land. Um, and I told you I'm not able to uh, to bear you. And he's now got a whole recounting of what's going, uh, of what going, what went on in Jewish history. Let's turn to the Alshach. So the Alshach says something very interesting. And it is in Aleph, and it's in Posit Gimel. And so if you just remind yourself it says in Posit Gimel, that would be useful. And it says, um, and it was when, as we said before, as Sham spoke to them, call at like everything he'd said, and interestingly, everything Hashem had said to him, after because Abdi killed uh, uh, the, the, the king of uh, Sichon, etc., etc., but every yard and bear its mouth, and, let, and, and over the, the Jordan River, and then bear a yard, etc. The Mar Hashem le Kena Dabar Lena Bechorev, and then he says, and then he goes into the whole thing here. So this is what the Al Sheikh has to say. He says the following thing: After Oma had over her reason, after it's already said the first bit, Hashem wrote to Moshe le Mar Shahiyat Tachocha, which, as we said in, in part one of the Shir, this is Moshe saying that the first part is making sure that the Jewish people are prepared to accept the criticism, the positive criticism, the constructive criticism that he's given them for the past mistakes so they don't repeat them. Um, That's what goes on to the second bit when it says here that Moshe Rabbeinu be'er es ha-Torah. Um, so he, he is going to reveal to them the Torah. Okay. Every year then, so if you look at that again, it's also demons we said. Um, uh, let's see. So we go with that one. Every year, then, 
Trying to find a place. But he bought my master. Oh, I've lost the place. The guy says, "Man, oh, actually, be a cashman. I got like a bullshit. He killed all of them. But every yard, but Eretz Moav, how Moshe be air as a Torah has eyes. Moshe began to elaborate on this Torah. So the Asher wants to know why did he wait now to elaborate to get the full." Insight, the full elaboration. Sorry, I got a little bit mixed up before. The full elaboration of the Torah. Why did it wait till this point in time? And here he says something which is, I think, fabulous. Very young. Why then? Why wait till then? But any the idea is this. The says toiv tam lama icher mila the air is the Torah ad somach l'sulukai. The reason that Moshe waited uh, for the final elaboration of the Torah till next to the moment or near the moment of his death. Who Chodesh Adar, which was in the Chodesh Adar, because remember Moshe Rabbeinu is born and dies on the same day. Um, Asher Mace boy. Al Kain Omar Vayhi. So it says Vayhi. Who Mamram Zo? Al Mamram Moshe Aleim. When Moshe says to him in Devorim Kof Tes Gimum, "Vlo Nos Hashem Lechem Leiv Ladas at Hayom Azayim." So Kof Tes. Now the Elsha is really going to talk about two things, which is going to take us into the mystical bit. In Kof Tes Bos at Gimum, there is a uh, there's so much to say in this posseg, and the Gemara spends a lot of time in the way that are discussing this posseg. However, it says the following thing. Koftes Gimel. Um, below Nos, and this is the posseg, Hashem did not give you, again, the Moshe was reviewing all of Jewish history, and they said, but the God did not give you, below Nos and Hashem lechem leiv lodas, the heart to know, or the heart to understand, but in I am the rise and the eyes to see, but as not in and the ears to hear, um, till this time hmm. till this time it would take 40 years for you to fully conceive of what Moshe's Torah is what it means and what it's teaching us 40 years to which the Gemara goes on to famously say and Rashi quotes this as well we learn from this a general idea that you only fully come to appreciate the teachings of your rabbi once you studied at his feet I'll come back to that shortly for 40 years now I say, well, that's, that's the second part. But interestingly here, this is the point that the, the first question he raises, why wait till now to explain the Torah? This is the answer he gives. It's said explicitly in the post later on the Torah, when it says clearly that it's because they wouldn't be able to get it till now. They wouldn't be able to understand it till now. And before 40 years, they're not going to be able to, get to, to, to fully comprehend what the Torah is talking about. Okay, fine. So let's see what the Alshuk says in Koftes over there. So if we look forward, our process, of course, our, our setters, of course, the Vorim, but this is Pashas Kisovo, so really the end of the Vorim, really very much at the end. And this is what he says, um, the Alshuk says, The reason that it says that Hashem didn't give you the heart to understand uh, until now, for 40 years, as the rabbi say in the Voidah Zorah, that's he on the base. No Talmud, no disciple, no student is able to fully understand the teachings of his master um, uh, until 40 years. But who Lama, and then he says, a bit mystical, Lama Kigashmihu, since as is the case, he is physical, and it was it, it, therefore the Torah to be perceived by him would have to be a gift. Now I have to pause. Rabbi, that's the point, so um, if you were to take a cup, so I have a cup here for demonstration purposes. But this cup, Scottish cup, by the way, um, which has coffee in it, um, this cup contains about 12 ounces. So if I was to take a hose, I live very near the Atlantic here in Long Island in New York. If I was to start pumping the water from the Atlantic, uh, which is it's not literally, but let's say it's an infinite amount of water because the Atlantic is con connected to the Pacific and the Indian Ocean and, and all the seas. So if I start pumping my infinite amount of water into my, or liquid into my cup, how much can I get into my 12-ounce cup, 12 cup? And the answer is obviously 12 ounces because an infinite cannot be contained within a finite. So this is Rabbi Dessler on his essay in Shavuos in, in the, the second volume of Mr. Belial. Now, if that's the case, then ask the question, is Hashem finite or infinite? Obviously infinite. The Torah, which is an expression of Hashem's infinity, is it infinite or, or, or finite? 
infinite. So how could a finite container, i.e. a human brain, uh, a slightly larger than a, than a 12 ounce container, I don't know how many ounces the human brain is, but anyway, liquid ounces. Uh, anyway, but basically how much could it contain? Obviously a finite amount and it's filled up, I can't take any more. So therefore the fact that the Jews got the Torah in Mount Sinai was a miracle. It was something that made no sense whatsoever. You cannot contain an infinite inside a finite, unless, of course, the laws of physics are suspended, which is exactly the definition of a miracle anyway. So at that point, we achieve a miraculous understanding of the Torah, and God gives it to us, to, uh, to us translation, puts it artificially, if that's the word, miraculously into our minds. But, so let me read on back to the Alshach. He says, but, by it's oracle, yes, I'll be the Matanus mission is Baruch for the finite to contain the infinite, the Torah, for the Jewish people to have accepted and got that in, the, in, in, the, in Midbar, that would require a miracle. It wouldn't happen naturally. Um, to understand this before you reach 40 years. Because we're given the whole Torah in Mount Sinai. But for that to go into our minds, hmm, that takes a miracle. The natural process will take 40 years. Aha, uh -huh. and then that now understands why it says that Hashem, uh, Moshe says, Hashem waited till now for me to explain the Torah to you because 40 years, then you'll get it. You've been studying for 40 years, then the Torah will go in. That's the that you got that first, but now the 40 years up, we can leave the miracle aside and move over to the natural acceptance, understanding, um, mastery of the Torah. That's the Alshach's answer over there. To um, move over to the Sfas Emes, he says an astonishing, an astonishing thing. I must admit, when I read this, I didn't think I could possibly say this to you, um, because uh, it's, it's big. It's going to sound, frankly, almost ridiculous. Um, but of course, almost ridiculous is the story of the Jewish people. It's almost ridiculous, if not completely ridiculous, that we're still here after our history. But ridiculousness and Klamath Shalom, I suppose, go together. If ridiculous is a positive thing, and I think it is. Let's see what the art of the, the Svas Hemis says, and you'll see how it fits very nicely with the theme, at least, of the Al and as I said before, Rabbi Dessler. So we're, here we're still, uh, uh, we're still uh, at the Alshach in Pashas, not in Pashas Devorim, uh, but much, much later on the Torah in Kofetes on the Gimel, as we, as we said before. That's not what the Svasem, the Rebbe of Ger, has to say. Hashem. Hashem didn't give to you, and he's very, uh, he's, he notices, which I would expect the Alshach to notice, actually, for some reason he doesn't, or actually probably does, but didn't comment on it. Why it doesn't say, it doesn't say Hashem didn't give you the understanding to this day, this time. It says Hashem didn't give you the heart to understand, the ears to hear, the, the eyes to see. Why didn't it say Hashem didn't give you the understanding? What's his eyes, ears, and so here that observation clinches the same theme from uh, in Sasemus that we found in the Alshach. Listen to this, interesting. Well, uh, and eyes to see, and hear, ears to hear. What do you mean? Isn't the door that stood in Mount Sinai known as the door dea, the generation of understanding? They understood. Understanding means they understood. They got the whole thing. They got that. That wasn't a problem for them. So what does it mean they didn't get it? They were the, by definition, they were the getters of it um, until now. Don't say Hashem didn't give you a, the understanding. It says the heart to understand. He didn't give the tools to understand. The physical tools, the heart, translation mind, uh, eyes and ears. Till now, because when they stood at Mount Sinai, and now this echoes what the Alshak says in Rabbi Desna, then that was not the normal process. They didn't understand in the normal way. Hashem, the Yiddish word, stuck it, pushed it into their minds as he pushed it, the infinite, into even Moshe Rabbeinu's mind. Because any Bria, any creation of Shem is Borach is finite in this world, and therefore, for an infinite that can be contained with a finite, needs a miracle, including Moshe Rabbeinu. Therefore, he says, 
So when they stood at Mount Sinai, it was therefore for that miracle to occur as though their bodies, the physical reality of their bodies, had to disappear, had to diminish at least, in order that the laws of physics would not constrain or stop the miraculous finite amount of knowledge being absorbed by them. Kamoshkov's on the post, says, Yashem, Nashi Yotsis Bidabr. My soul left my body when he spoke. Now, this is a famous Gemara, and the Gemara, this is in Shabbos, Peches, on the base, if I remember rightly. And there, the Gemara famously says that, when, that we heard the first words of Hashem is Baruch directly. It was too much, too much for the physical being, the corporeal being. And therefore, their souls left their bodies and they died. And God had to bring them back to life. Um, but and again, Rabbi Dessa says that it simply means when you get that level of insight of truth, then this world and its falsehood and your reality, or ultimately your lack of reality, disappears. And therefore, the physical disappeared as well. You had to bring them back into the physical world. mamish dar dea. That means they were indeed the generation who understood beliguf, batikanaguf, nisan libne Israel. And that is to say that they did it without the physical process, without effectively a body. It doesn't mean to say they also like, turned into ghosts or spirits floating about the place. It means they were no longer constrained by their bodies. Their bodies were no longer, as it were, a barrier. But take on a goof. But so therefore, what we're talking about here is that the soul, the souls of the Jewish people, predominated and the bodies fell away. The physical fell away when they were in those 40 years in the desert. That's the body not being a barrier to the spiritual. But it's the other way about. When they come into the land of Israel, what about that? And that's after 40 years, at this moment, the moment we're analyzing now. Hashem gave two aspects to this whole process of getting the Torah. One, the process in, in the desert was how to transform, how to move beyond the physical, the constraints of the physical, and allow the, phys the spiritual to predominate. As we've just said, the physical was no longer a barrier. But now they're going into the land of Israel. The land of Israel, that's different. When they're leaving there, however, it's Israel and Besa Mikdash. Their purpose is the karev hagashmi as haguf is to take the physical. So now we said before the physical retreats in the phase of the spiritual. Now the spiritual is going to amalgamate with the physical, so that the physical. Now they're going in to the land of Israel. All the miracles that happens in the in the desert are going to cease, and they're going into the land of Israel. Now they have to, as it were, take the spiritual and manifested in their normal, physical, mundane bodies in their, in their existence. They will elevate their physical to be a walking spiritual. If that phrase doesn't sound too clumsy, it sounds a bit clumsy to me. And the apostle says, And the apostle says, the apostle a post there that he goes on to say, Tikan aguf hoya chasad e chosa lehem koidim biasaurus. That the, the taking the body and making it an amalgam of the, the spiritual and the physical and one thing only happened when they came into the land of Israel. This is an intriguing idea. I mean, the ultimate role of the Jew is to be a light to the nations. But that means you have to interact with the nations. But how do you interact with the nations? There's a beautiful idea which I saw from Rebzalm and Sarotskin when we're sitting at Mount Sinai and the Medrash says, Hashem held Mount Sinai over our heads like a, a barrel ready to crash down on top of us. And said, if you accept the Torah, that's fine. If you don't accept the Torah, this will be your shom to for a second. This is the place you're going to be buried. Everybody imagines that means Hashem says, I'll drop it on top of you. But he points out it's not the words. The word says, this will be the place where you will be buried. In other words, I have to keep you here. Your real role is to go into the land of Israel and be an inspiration to the rest of the world. But if you're not going to accept the Torah, I'll have to keep you here in this ghetto. Um, in an artificial state of spiritual greatness, that's not spontaneous and not yours. It's a gift from me. But if you'll accept it, then there's a pro proposition of transference of your state. You can go as this spiritual nation, um, a nation of God, 
oh, it sounds awful in English. Um, it's all sorts of wrong um, imagery there. But uh, an Am Hanifcher that could literally inspire the world and people would come to you in order to have their, to be elevated by it. Lord Jacobowitz, three chief rabbis ago in England, said that the, the state of Israel, um, and he was a supporter of the state of Israel, uh, the state of Israel should not be renowned in the world as a number four or number five, whatever it is, arms manufacturer, or indeed for its own uh, might in arms or anything like that. What we do, what the Am Hanifka means, um, how I would translate it is what we do best. It's not an arrogance thing, Jews are more clever, Jews are whatever. Um, it means what we do best is God. We do spirituality best. That would be our claim. If that's arrogance, sorry. In that case, I'll accept that as a, a, as a, as a criticism, but that's what we claim. If we get it right, we can demonstrate and prove that claim by having taken the level, the spiritual level, which is a gift to us in, 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 in the desert, and now bringing it with us into the land of Israel. Hmm. And that's only therefore, why does it come at the end of the 40 years uh, that uh, Moshe tells them all this terror? Because now that you are about to go into the land of Israel, effectively it's new terror. It's a new approach to terror. So he's giving them a new insight. The breeze that took place before is going to be a second breeze, a second covenant, which is going to take place before we step over the border into the land of Israel. We now have a new role and it demands uh, a literally a walking spiritual Jew um, who is able to interact with the world as well as uh, maintain the highest spiritual level. Now you remember when we were in Parsha's Pinchas a few weeks ago, that was Moshe Rabbeinu's argument to Hashem. He argued and he hoped and he saw signs that perhaps Hashem was relaxing his, his decree, his ruling that Moshe should come into the land of Israel. And his argument was, but I can touch both worlds. I can touch the simplest Jew or the highest Jew. And really, to make Jew, therefore, I can, I can make them take on this role that you want them to have. Of course, Hashem says, no, it's transferable. It transfers to, to Yeshua. This is Rick Yobas. Why should people talk about Sina? Most Yeshua and Yeshua is the kingdom, et cetera. There is a transference process which is allowed. Okay. Let's go back to the Alshik. Um, because as I said, there is the Alshik, which is uh, uh, here in the. Uh, in, in the beginning on a more mystical uh, sense, and then a far more mundane sense. Well, mundane is the wrong word, but a more, far more practical, everyday sense. How about that? So he says the following thing. Um, so go back to the question, why does he wait so near his death? And he says the following thing, perish. The reason is, it says, um, that's the post that we said before, Hashem didn't give you the Torah. No, uh, oh, sorry, sorry, it's here in our center. Sorry, uh, sorry. But here, after uh, forty years, Bekodesh Dabar Dabar Moshe El Ben Israel Kichol Moshe is able to speak Kichol like all that Moshe and Ke Kof is like. And like as a comparison, it's like it's not the real thing. It's not the same thing, but it's like the same thing. Moshe was able to teach this Torah like Hashem taught it to him. Kichol Hashem taught it to him. They'd reached a certain level which they would be able to be the next link in the chain. Moshe, Yeshua, Zakanian, and Shekinah, etc., etc., et which we'll come back to shortly. Uh, after 40 years. Why, therefore, next to his death? Because now they're able to take that transference. And back to the practical advice, you're not able to fully understand your Rebbe's teachings until 40 years. And what was that they're able to reach the, the mind of Moshe Rabbeinu? That's the mind that was informed by God. That means to say, therefore, in the same way as he was the type, disciple of God who accepted all that, all his knowledge from God, then they were able to accept it from him. That process was achieved after 40 years in the desert. No free gifts, no miracles now. Now they've been learning in Yeshiva for 40 years. Now that's become part of them. But before they get to that stage, no, listen to this. Yeah, they of course were learning Torah. Of course they understood Torah. They accepted Torah, but not fully made themselves, as it were, the next cup that the knowledge there can be poured into. Ki im bechemotas oimek nekodas tamik sas devorim. 
Because the slightest mistake that you make in a calculation, think of science. I mean, it's, it's far more important than science. But think of science. You get, you're off one millimeter. You're off one mi micro, mi I think words, um, uh, molecule. Then things can go completely wrong. Uh, an atom out of place it could be a disaster. And that's certainly true of the tower. It, it's only now that you're able to, as it were, fully absorb and accept malicious Torah and move on to the next stage. So far, so good. I hope that was with me stammering and stuttering uh, at the beginning was still hopefully um, um, understandable to you. Let's again continue this uh, idea of Moshe Kibbal Torah Messina, therefore, and he is, it passes to Yeshua, it was after 40 years, and Yeshua passes it to, there is a process where uh, the, the disciple and the Rebbe become, as it were, mirrors of each other. And for a mirror to, a, to see, you know, to, something to mirror everything that it's, it's reflecting, it has to, as it were, be the same sort of dimensions as the thing that it is reflecting. Um, and it's so interesting, incidentally, that, um, that very often Talmudim look so, so like, um, they are rebbies, and I've told you this before in the shirim. I remember my Rosh Hashim was Rebbe Gurvitz. This picture is looking down at me now on the wall. He had on the right side of his head a lump, um, a cyst, it was. Um, and when he was considering something, uh, thinking about something, he often used to put his hand there like this, and he would rub it, and this thing would wobble about. Um, we jokingly called this uh, his Toysus Harosh. Toysus Harosh is the Harosh, uh, of course, the Hebrew for the head. Toysus, of course, Toysus are the extra commentaries of the Rashi, but the Rosh, that's the Rosh, the famous rabbi, the Rosh, uh, he wrote his own a compendium of Toysus, additional comments to the commentaries to the Torah, to the Talmud, and it's called Toysus or Rosh. But it also means, can be, the, the pun is, additions to the head. And we used to make the joke, the Babe Gurubitz has so many brains, they had to make an extension, an addition to his head, to uh, accommodate them. But once it was a Bocher, uh, after Mariv, there was only a few was left, everybody going down to eat the meal, but that must have been a good davening I was doing then because I was there. Um, just finished very late, stepped back, and somebody came over and said, look, look, and at the front was a bocher asking Rebbe a question. He was leaning on the stand and doing this, which of course he did when he was considering the question. And leaning on the stand was the bocher, rubbing his, well, he didn't have a, a cyst in his head, but he was doing the same thing. Very often you become a reflection of, of, the, of the rabbi that is your teacher. You see things his way. And very often, I've seen this phenomenon actually look. There seems to be some sort of, don't ask me how this would work, but a, a change of their physical appearance. Or maybe it's just because they adopt the same uh, uh, affectations. Fine. Uh, in Pukiovus, right in the beginning, after it, it, it traces the uh, the transference of the Torah, of course, Moshe Kippur Torah Messina, Moshe Yeshua, the Shoah, the Kenyans, the Kenyans, the Levim, the Levim, the Moshe Yeshua, the Kenyans, the Dina. The whole transference process from generations and to Kufot and epochs to the period of the prophets, judges and prophets, etc. etc. And then um, we jump forward uh, and to, uh, to Mishnah Dalad. Yosef ben Yezer, Ish Shreda, but Yosef ben Yachin, Ish These were the heads of the Sanhedrin. One is the Av Beistin and the Rosh Beistin. These Zugim, these, uh, these pairs, which is the process of two rabbis being the next links in the chain. Um, they were the ones who were the next links in the chain. Yosef and Yezer, Yishtreda Omer, make sure your house is a, a base vad, a, a place where Chachomim said. And and, and sit um, at the dust of their feet and drink thirstily. Very interesting. It's an interesting metaphor, an interesting picture that, that Yosef and Yezer paints here. Why does it sit in the, the, the dust of their feet? Dust of their feet. Uh, well, of course, the foot is the lowest part of the body. And, and the lowest part of the foot is the dust on the foot. And I wonder if this is just what I was thinking about this preparing this year last night, that perhaps it's telling a very simple idea. You start at the very lowest to reconstruct. You start at the very lowest. And remember, Moshe's argument was, I can touch the highest and I can touch the lowest. When you select for yourself a rabbi, a teacher, and for the women listening, a rabbi, son, someone who's learned, you want to start at the very basics. Get them to teach you the very basics in life. 
and then work your way up to you, as it were, being the same shape so that what's in them can fully transfer itself into you. As the Rav, make for yourself the Rav. Make you into him. Start at the bottom, get him to let, teach you the very basics. And then you'll find as you grow, there's so much more and so much more and so much more in him. That's the position of Jewish greats. And that's the position of Jewish greatness, which Klaus Schroll achieves through the leadership of Moshe Rabbeinu and why he teaches them the Torah at the end of the process, when they've reached the head, then they can get the whole thing. I wish you all a very good Shabbos.